ओके हेलो एवरी वन दिस इज शीबा आई हैव इन बीन एबल टू रिकॉर्ड यूट्यूब वीडियोज़ इन अ लॉन्ग टाइम लाइक मैसेज वीडियोज दी ओनली रीज़न बींग दैट आई लॉस माई माम ऑन अक्टूबर ट्वेल्थ टू ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एंड इट वॉज वेरी डेवस्टेटिंग Of course, any death can be very devastating, but losing a mom can be heaps of devastation and heaps of uh, sadness and uh, great grief. But uh, one thing that I'm really uh, satisfied is that, or I have come to terms, is that you know, mom is with the Lord, and. Um, she's uh she was a godly woman she was a great person she loved everyone like selflessly even though harm was done to her she um uh did not take any of her like vengeance or judge them you know but she was all she always looked to god and she said you know god is the judge and he's the one who's going to avenge his enemies who are also her enemies or vice versa so <clears throat> she was a great woman a great uh, woman of god who uh, served as a principal and also she uh was very faithful to god you know and uh, when you're faithful to god god also brings justice to your soul it says in the bible so there is nothing to fear there is nothing to worry one thing we have to know is that we have to rely on god because ultimately god is not blind he is not deaf and he is not mute he sees everything he knows everything and is going to do things at the right time in his time now for the wicked it might seem that he is never going to do anything because his way he keeps on doing the things that he wants to do uh endless times but that's not the case and that's why i thought i'm going to talk about um psalm 10 today where david you know talks about these wicked people and then he presents them before god in uh psalm 10 verses 2 to 4 it says in his arrogance the wicked man hunts down the weak who caught who are caught in the schemes he devises He boasts about the cravings of his heart he blesses the greedy and reviles the lord in his pride the wicked man does not seek him in all his thoughts there is no room for god see he thinks that there is no room f- because there is no room for god he devises wicked things and he does wicked things and uh, he is very greedy his pride takes over his soul and his heart and his thoughts have no room for god see when you have good thoughts that means you are entertaining good things in your life but when you don't have good thoughts there's only one other thing and that is you're entertaining bad thoughts that means you're entertaining evil thoughts see in this world there's either good or bad there's nothing in between at least in god's kingdom you cannot be lukewarm it says in the bible so either it's good or bad now these are the schemes of the wicked and he also says to himself in psalm uh, 10 and verse 6 i'm reading from king james version he says that to himself nothing will ever shake me he swears no one will ever do mean <clears throat> harm now uh and then he goes about saying his mouth is full of lies in i'm reading from verse 7 his mouth is full of lies and threats trouble and evil are under his tongue he lies in wait near the villagers from ambush he murders the innocent that is so sad his mouth is full of lies now how do you know that a wicked man is full of lies for a wicked man will not put a label on his head and say i'm wicked so people recognize me as one who's bad in the world no he will never put like that he will exhibit himself as one who is really pious very good and um, and uh who and acts very innocent too 
So how do you know that a wicked man is wicked? We can only know through discernment. What is discernment? Knowing the right from wrong. When can you have proper discernment? You can only have proper discernment when you rely on God. When the Spirit of God is in us, we can recognize what is right and what is wrong. Otherwise, the world is filled with, filled with filth and the lies of the enemy, the Satan. Satan rules the world, it says in the Bible. So when someone rules the world, the kingdom people also, will, the people in that kingdom will also be like that. But there are other people who are not the followers of Satan and they are the followers of Jesus, God. So their outlook and their perspective, their way of doing things will be different from the wicked people. In verse 8 it says, <clears throat> He lies in wait near the villagers. From ambush he murders the innocent. That is so sad because from ambush meaning um, lying in secret, you know waiting uh, secretly and planning uh, secret things to murder the innocent. And have we not seen that? Yes, we've seen many innocent lives are murdered. Uh, family members do that. We have seen even in the Bible that Cain murders Abel. That's the first murder we have seen. If, if people cannot believe that uh, their own family members can murder their own family members, then it's foolish uh, for us to think that, that this kind of murder doesn't exist in this world today. It's not the case. When it started in the Bible, we've seen in the first um, set of created people, uh, from Adam's side, from Adam's, you know, son killing each other. And we've seen many people like that. Like Joseph brothers also got jealous of him and they put him in the pit to die. Right? If someone's put in the desert in a pit, can you, can anyone just take him out? But it can. But so they thought that he would die there because of the jealousy, because of the dreams he got, because of the way he was, you know, uh, prophesying actually about himself. So people get jealous and then just jealousy is the only factor that can kill people. So and his eyes wait in secret for his victims like a lion in cover. He lies in wait. He lies in wait to catch the helpless. He catches the helpless and drags them off his net. His victims are crushed. They collapse. They fall under his strength. Now all that he does. Okay. So these wicked people, you know, they lie in wait. They are, they are very secretive. They see when the time comes for the innocent to fall prey to them. So they, they do all these things. But at the same time, we have a God who judges. Okay. We cannot like underestimate his power. We cannot say God might work very late after maybe a murder happens. No, but God is just watching. Maybe a person can murder one, two, three. But ultimately, in the end, when God steps down, that wicked person cannot do anything else but shut his lies. And it says in the Bible also that uh, the wicked will have, like, I think, uh, here, where it says that, you know, when they shed the blood, I believe, when an innocent blood is shed, his own blood also will be shed by another person. And it is there in Gen uh, Genesis 9, 6, it says, Whoever sheds human blood, by humans shall their blood be shed. For in the image of God has God made mankind. So be very careful. You know, I'm talking about a subject which is not very pleasing, which is not very, um, you know, some, it might be very contrary to the people and some might not believe. But I'm only speaking from what the Bible says. So, <clears throat> and God will not forgive that person. Their blood cries out. And in Cain's blood, um, sorry, Abel's blood cries out till today. Because Cain murdered him, and what did what happened to Cain? He became a vagabond. He went from pillar to post. He could never settle down. His his hands were never blessed. So meaning that he lived under curse, and he did. But 
God grants him grace because he gets scared saying that if someone else kid kills him, how does he know? See, this verse says that if he kills another person, another person can kill him, will kill him. So with that fear of life, fear of death, he asks God, what what will happen to me if someone, you know, God, I'm sorry I did this. But if someone comes and kills me, then what happens? Then God, you know, spares his life. See, he's a merciful God too in the Old Testament. It's not, he's the same God today, yesterday, today and forever. So if he showed mercy in the New Testament, he is going to show the show mercy. And he did show mercy to Cain by saying that whoever kills you, uh, they will have like seven times seven, their blood will be avenged. So uh, he says that. So, But Cain on his own life could not be uh, blessed at all. He was cursed actually. And uh, and th that's the plight. <clears throat> so, about the wicked people, it says that ultimately in Psalm 10, verses 16 to 18, it says, The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his land. You, Lord, hear the desire of the afflicted. So, Lord, Lord hears that. Lord knows that the desire of the afflicted or the ones who are prey to the uh, wicked, he hears them. You encourage them and you listen to their cries, defending the fatherless and the oppressed, so that mere earthly mortals will never again strike terror. Now what, what the last two verses uh, here says that, that, you know, he defends the, especially he defends the fatherless. So, and the oppressed. Who are the oppressed? The fatherless are ones, those children who don't have a father or who don't have a male figure in their life. And who are the oppressed? The ones who are like just because there's no person to go and give them back or a male guy to go and fight from that household. Such people are really oppressed. I mean, you know, and not just them. The poor people also can be oppressed. The people who are not in authority are oppressed. So we have various sections of people who are oppressed because of their um, social status. Okay, that divines a lot in these days. So because of that, uh, they, are, they are oppressed. Now, but the, lo the last two verses in Psalm 10 and 18th verse, it says the last two lines of that verse, it says, so that merely so that mere earthly mortals will never again strike terror. How, what does this mean? It means that, you know, God will avenge the wicked. So that these people, whoever it is, the other people, when they see that these things happen and they know that murders can happen, that wicked people are doing the op oppression and all that, they know that God um that the, the mere earthly mortals will never again strike terror so that the other person will know that god will strike them that's why they will again not uh put themselves into such cursed lives of murdering someone or uh, oppressing someone or telling lies on someone or gaining their lands by fraud or the being deceptive or even like you know putting them down by by their filthy talk uh, and also like mailing m m uh, them in f about their future you know or doing witchcraft and black magic and things like that you know anything that a person cannot do anything that the person feels jealous about the other person and they do it to harm that person God is not going to keep quiet why because he is a God who is sitting on the throne and he is seated on the throne and he is a judge a king so he says so when he judges when he throws punishment on the wicked when the wicked are punished God, uh, earthly people, it says in Psalm 10, that the earthly people will never again strike terror. So, you know, uh, we have to be careful of what our dealings are with, with ourselves, with people, and most importantly, with God. 
why because he created us he says he takes pride and he is he is going to uh, in telugu it says like yajamade dev devun ni nen unnano the battle is his he says i'm going to fight your battles and also in genesis 96 he says whoever sheds human blood by humans shall their blood be shed for in the image of god has god made mankind so god is not going to keep quiet about this because we are made in the image of god we have to be be doing the things that god did on the earth and who and what did god do on, on the earth jesus did many things like he showed sh- compassion he healed the sick and he did miracles he did signs and wonders and he preached and teach the gospel you know and he paved the way for salvation for for all of us to enter into into the kingdom of god so that is what jesus taught us and that is what our, our, our uh, you know religion teaches us too it's a connection our christianity is nothing but a religion which is a spiritual religion actually you you could say more than the traditional because it actually connects us with god and we speak to him and in turn he speaks to us too it's like a telephonic interview uh, telephonic uh, um conversation right so we hear we talk he hears he talks and we hear so we have to be very careful about wh- how we deal and how we live in our lives and and um so always glorify god remember that we are made in the image of god to glorify god and not to become an opposition to god so that's when we fall into the satans so that's when people fall into satan's kingdom and that's when like god has to step down to do the battle and ultimately god wins and satan is lost forever i mean he, every day battles are won in the in the heavenly realms you know god fights for innocent people and satan fights back but what happens they are they are destroyed the satan followers are destroyed and god's angels are have victory so we need to remember that we need to be in the kingdom of god serving god knowing god completely depending on god and and not just that but doing the will of god okay so i uh, thank you for giving me this time and uh, may you be blessed by this word